A uniform rod AB has mass 5 kilograms and length 4 meters. If it's uniform, that means that the center of mass is right in the center and its weight will be 5 times gravity. Let's just mark this on as 2 meters here. The rod is held in a horizontal position by a light inextensible string here. The end A of the rod rests against a rough vertical wall. Um, if this wall is rough, then there's friction holding this rod in place. Now, if the wall was smooth, this, this end of the rod would slip downwards, so friction must be acting upwards in order to keep it in position. One end of the string is attached to the rod at B, and the other end is attached to the wall at a point D. So there's tension in this string pulling away from B. The point D is vertically above A with AD 3 metres. Marked on, a particle of mass 2 kilograms is attached to the rod at C where AC is 0 0.5 metres as shown. So let's mark the mass of this. So that's 2 kilograms, 2 times gravity. The rod is in equilibrium in a vertical plane perpendicular to the wall. The coefficient of friction between the rod and the wall is mu, we don't know that. Okay, so tension in the string we have to find. I need to mark on a few more things before I can proceed with this question. Tension is a, diagon a force that's diagonal, so we have to resolve this into components. There'll be a vertical component, and then there will be a horizontal component. I'm going to mark that up here so it's less cluttered down here, even though it's actually acting at B. I don't, uh, before I break this down, I need an angle, and I don't have an angle here. However, I do know that this side is 3 and this side is 4, so this side must be 5, which means that I can find some values. I won't need the actual value of alpha because this component here is T sine alpha, and this component here is T cos alpha. So those are the values that I need to find, sine alpha and cos alpha. Sine alpha is 3 over 5, and cos alpha is 4 over 5. Now that I've found those, there's one more for, for, uh, force to be marked on, and it's not as obvious as the others, but if we just look at the horizontal direction, we have two forces going upwards and two forces going downwards. If we look at the horizontal, then we have one force going to the left, but there's nothing on the diagram to indicate a force to the right. There must be one, because this rod is in equilibrium. And what we have is a reaction force here. So I'm just going to mark that with a little R there. I've got to find the tension in the string. By resolving vertically I have an extra unknown and horizontally I have an extra unknown on top of my T. Really I, don't, I would rather not have that. So if I take moments about A, that will eliminate both of these moments as their distance as a zero. So that seems like the sensible thing to do. So this is part A, about A. There are two clockwise moments and there's one anti-clockwise moment. So I'll do the anti-clockwise one first, four multiplied by T sine alpha, four T sine alpha is equal to, as it's in equilibrium, 0 0.5 times 2g plus 2 times 5g. So that means that t is, if this is 3 fifths, I specifically don't put those values in straight away, just in case I've calculated this incorrectly, I can still get um, as many marks as possible. So over here we have 11g divided by 4, but also divided by 3 fifths, or multiplied by 5 over 3, if you like. And that gives me 55 over 12g, or 
For part B, I have to find the magnitude of the force exerted by the wall on the rod at A. It doesn't say the reaction force, it doesn't say the friction force, it actually means the resultant of those two. If this force is going upwards and this force is going to the right, the resultant will be going diagonally across here. And it probably helps to make a little vector triangle. So we have reaction going to the right and friction going upwards. And that means the resultant will be like this. So that's the resultant force. I've got to find the magnitude of this, which means I'll use these two values and use Pythagoras. First of all, I need to find the two values. Clearly. First, I'm going to result, uh, resolve horizontally, and that will give me r, because I've got r to the right and t cos alpha to the left. So r equals t cos alpha, which equals 50 pi over 12g, multiplied by 4 fifths which simplifies to 11 over 3g. I'll leave that as an exact value. If I resolve vertically, that will enable me to find the value of friction because I have all of the other values. I have friction and T sine alpha going up. Equals 2g plus 5g going down. So that means friction is equal to 7g minus 55 over 12g multiplied by sine alpha, which equals 17 over 4g. Now I can use Pythagoras to find the magnitude of f which is, to three significant figures, 55.0. For the last part, I have to find the range of possible values for mu. So let, this takes a, a little bit of understanding. This rod is not slipping down, it's in equilibrium. So it could be that we're at F max, friction could be limiting, or it could be that friction is less than that. So we have that friction for part C is less than or equal to F max. Or, alternatively, friction is less than or equal to mu R. Dividing both sides to find mu, I need to find a value for mu that is equal to friction, 11 over 3g. Sorry. 17 over 4g, divided by reaction, which is 11 over 3g. And that gives me 51 over 44, which is equal to 1.16. Unusual there, because that's greater than 1, but actually, there are occasions when mu can be greater than uh, 1. So either this value or this value. Marks wise, first of all, there's a method mark for this, usual criteria, all terms included, no additional terms added, dimensionally correct with force and distance for each term. Um, then there's an two, there are two accuracy marks. Uh, deduct one for each mistake. If the G's are missed out, you actually lose both of those marks because that shows a lack of understanding. And then an accuracy mark for 44.9. For part B, there's a method mark here for an equation only in T or finding 11G. Then there's a, another method mark for this equation here again only in T. Um, you, you are allowed um, to mistake sine and cos but you must have all terms included 
and an accuracy mark for finding the value. Then there's a method mark here for using Pythagoras with your values that you found even if they're incorrect as long as you correctly use Pythagoras. And then an accuracy mark for 55.0, your equivalent. And then a method mark for using that f uh, friction must be less than or equal to mu r. Now it's important here, it can't be equal to and it can't be less than, otherwise you'll lose that mark. And then an accuracy mark for either this value or this value.